do. Number one, steal her lover's work button down and wear it with a work in jeans to wear it to work in jeans when lunch. Wait, what? Uh, wear it <laughs> to work t- with worn in. There it is, with worn in jeans. Oh, okay. To lunch. You wait, you're gonna wear it to lunch or you're wearing it to work? You're gonna wear it. <laughs> Sorry, wear it. I'm confused by this whole you're, thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, start over. Okay. Don't worry, Say I'll, it again. I'll edit all of this. No, you won't. <laughs> guys week number four we are back hi guys hi (laughs) they're all so excited to be here for week four (laughs) who's this guy i don't know what's this character i was gonna be like a like a sidekick i was trying to be like andy off of conan Oh, or sure. like uh, mm-hmm. the guy with glasses who's bald off Letterman. Like I wanted to be like that sidekick who just says like, yeah, wow, everybody looks very excited. So beautiful tonight. Oh, A lot of beautiful me. people. You guys are gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that you'd be very good at that. Why do you say that? Because uh, I see you more of a lead man kind of guy. Rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you'd be mad if I was like, I see you as a great version of that. I would be great at that. But you'd get mad about it. No, I don't need to be the lead. Did you hear what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, welcome to Summer's Off. Summer's Off. <laughs> we have a real treat for you today. Hey, real quickly though, rolling business. I believe there oh. was a request for four 16 bar cuts, and I don't even know if we got a full one 16 bar <laughs> cut. Would you like to share another 16 bars with us? Oh, no. I haven't had a chance to listen to the old cut that we did, so no, I cannot confirm or deny. Well, I'm add during camp, that. Rage pretty much promised she was going to sing a bunch. I so did not. here's what I'll say throughout this podcast. Let's at least get one 16 bar cut out of you. There's no way. Let yourself be inspired by the movement and the flavor of the pod. <laughs> Something should inspire you to burst into song. That's what real good musical theater is anyway. Sure. Is sure. when you no longer can speak, you have to sing it. Mm, I don't know that I ever have felt that it, it way. It might just be a question. Diane Keaton was in between steps. A step wives club, first wives club, and something else. It could just be something like that. I was going to call it Stepford Wives Club. Mm. That's wrong. That's not the right movie. <laughs> That's not even a movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I have rolling business. I didn't realize. Oh, okay. That I know. From um, Sisterhood, I don't think I got into any budget talk, which is fine. I'm not going to get into it now. You can know it. It was a huge hit. Um, oh, okay. That's all I have to say about I that. I mean, there's a second one, so that makes sense. A second one and soon to be a third. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Yep. Uh, yeah, but I thought I did not follow my format to the T and got a little sidetracked and distracted and never got to the hard-hitting facts, which, again, is why you come to listen to us, because yep. I may or may not get to them. I may not. <laughs> the nice thing is, I don't think anybody noticed. I don't think anyone cared. <laughs> Nobody cared. <laughs> Nobody cared. Ty. Yes, ma'am. What did we watch this week? We watched Camp 2, Back to Camp, We're Older Now, Let's Make Love. <laughs> It's a long subtitle, but it's a goodie. Oh, thank goodness. We watched Something's <laughs> Gotta Give. Are you which sure? I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I always think is as good as it gets. Mm. Like, I think these titles like get mishmashed in my mind because they both have Jack Nicholson in them. Mm-hmm. And both have somewhat of a similar vibage to me. Sure. Mm-hmm. There are two Shakespeare shows that I always get mixed up to. Yeah, and what I are think they? the plays are very different, but the names, um, as you like it, and um, much ado. Yeah, much ado. <laughs> I was like, I know <laughs> I what like, it is. What's the other one? Much ado. <laughs> I always thing get those two mixed as up. As you like it, very differently. Don't confuse those. <laughs> <laughs> Will be shameful to you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> very embarrassing. <laughs> Something's got to give. What year do you think this came out? This is so tricky. Okay. (laughs) I have been stumped on this since the movie began earlier today. Hmm. I kept thinking, oh, this is probably around like 99-ish or something like that. Hmm. And then all of a sudden I kept thinking, no, I think it's later than that. 
And then there was a moment in time where I thought it was like right around Sister of the Traveling Pants, like 2005 ish. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I think that's too late. So I'm just going to throw a guess out. I think it was 2002. So close. Was it three? Yes. Dang it. That was my second guess. Why wasn't it your first? Because I felt good about 2002. <laughs> 2003. Three. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thoughts, we're soft- thoughts on that year? Sophomores in high school. Yeah, tell everyone how old we are. We were getting <laughs> sexier by the day. We had gotten out of our awkward freshman year. Mm-hmm. We were both kind of getting sort of cute. Mm-hmm. And older older girls and guys and everybody in betweens, they were like, ooh, who is this? <laughs> and you're like, this is called sophomore tie and rage. <laughs> and we strutted down the hallways, singing BB Mac songs, and everybody was like, those are two cool kids. <laughs> That may have been your reality. Sophomore year was still a pretty awkward year did, for me, personally. Did I, did I ever tell you that story about I would walk down the hall? I think it was junior year, actually. And I would sing, until you're back here, baby. And then whenever friends would like hear me coming, then they'd go, miss you, I want you, I need you so. And I go, till you're back here, baby, yeah. <laughs> it was like a singing bandit type of thing. As I walk down the halls of high school. What? Go ahead. And that is how I knew I was a cool kid. (laughs) Because I never got beat up. (laughs) What was it like to have that much confidence in high school? Um... It was so I didn't have that much when I got in. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Sophomore year, oh, I know. 03 oh, yeah. was the awakening of, from the cocoon for this butterfly or this <laughs> moth, depending on how you look at me. Um, it was dangerous. Mm. I think I, I told the story about how I used to flirt with my economics teacher in front of the entire class. <laughs> yep. So it yep. was dangerous. Mm-hmm. I didn't always use my powers for good. <laughs> Rage, what were you like in 03? Uh, as a sophomore, um, I was pretty unsure of myself. Um, very much a follower. I was just starting to get into like my own niche more. Mm-hmm. Um, so more kind of choir, more theater. It's things niche. like <laughs> what is it? Niche? Yeah, it's yeah. Niche. <laughs> niche. My own niche. Niche. Um, yeah, so it, it was taking time. I was, you know, also in the cocoon. You were super popular and super cute. Don't even lie. I know who you were. I, I know you. No. You were the popular hot girl. You were. You were Jennifer Love You and Can't Hardly Wait. Don't even lie. You might have been a sophomore, but you were coming, you were turning into her. No, we already talked about this. I could never go to those parties. How could I possibly be that girl? Because That made you more that girl. Because it's like, oh, I wish Rach was here. Can you imagine her hair blowing in the wind right now when she walks in? You were that girl. No, I know I you were not. that girl. I know you would think that, but if I searched my soul, I was a friend. I was the girl's friend. I was a follower, big time. I did not come into myself until much later on in high school. Yeah. And then I didn't care, and then I was not that girl. So I by was, senior year. I was the girl who didn't care. The girl who doesn't care the is the hottest care. of girls. That's JLH. You know it. <laughs> you know you're JLH. <laughs> no. I digress. We digress. <laughs> oh, three. So this movie... That that doesn't surprise me mm-hmm. that year, mm-hmm. and I think it's just because of style is why I say that. Yeah, it's more yeah. about the clothes. clothing wise and fashion. Uh, music. Uh huh. What was our first song that played? Uh, Do you remember? you're my butterfly, sugar baby. Speaking of butterflies, <laughs> <laughs> crazy town. Yep. Whoa. Yeah, for if sure. If that doesn't take you back to a place and a time, then you are too young for this podcast. Yep. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> It is it is a po- it is a movie that I wondered in 03 mm-hmm. which I think I had seen like slivers of this movie before. Yeah, you had said that. You're like, I think I've seen this I, movie. I had not seen it. Oh, okay. The the Phew. moral of the story was I thought I maybe had seen it. I mm-hmm. think I had seen parts of it or kind of knew the gist of this movie but did had never seen it okay. because so many things were surprising to me. Good. I was like, "Oh, I don't remember this at all." Good. So I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Um but I don't think I would have liked it mm-hmm. back then. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. I think I can appreciate it more with age sure. than I ever would have back then. Yeah. I think that's... I don't remember the first time I saw this. Uh-huh. Um, probably a renter, but also maybe a renter with my mom. Yeah. Do you think your mom and you sat down and watched this watched yeah. this movie? It's probably one of those really awkward ones. And you were blushing. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Watching love scenes with your parents. It's 
especially, I mean, even as an adult now, it makes me blush, but especially as uh, under their roof, like as a high schooler or even a college kid. Oh, so embarrassing. What's the raunchiest movie you ever watched with your parents? Like when that moment <laughs> happened, you were like, oh, no. <laughs> Or you knew it was coming, and you're like, oh, is it worth it? Yeah, let's just try it. Oh, oh no, this is terrible. Um, with, I can't remember, but I remember I was once wa- once watching Closer. Oh, yeah? In my living room, and I didn't know... I didn't know enough about it. I was just watching it. It had the great cast. Oh, wow. It was like Natalie Portman and Julia Roberts and everybody. And I was uh-huh. like, oh, this should be good. Um, I knew it was R, but, you know, I was probably, I was in college at the time. Yep. And I was just watching it in my living room like an idiot. And my, <laughs> I remember it was my mom and my dad walking through and they're like, what are you watching? And they're like, <laughs> I don't know. Effort, I was, effort, effort, I effort. I was getting ready to fast forward it. <laughs> C word. Ooh. <laughs> 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 The sweet, uncomplicated satisfaction of the younger woman. Some say I'm an expert on the subject. Guess that's because I've been dating them for over 40 years. Yeah, it was something. Do you remember when we watched, (laughs) oh gosh, what's that movie where all the food comes alive? Hmm. And then the food has like a big orgy at the end of the movie. What? It's got Seth Rogen who does the voice of it. And he's a hot dog, or Michael Sarah's a hot dog. Oh, yeah. And they're looking um, for buns. The girls. Yeah, I want to, it's not super food, but it's like <laughs> yeah. something so, like that. I remember yeah, watching yeah. That, that with name? my dad. Oh, and God. then the orgy happens at the end, and it's like, oh, no. <laughs> this is so graphic and like. <laughs> so- so like you you couldn't even get this graphic with actual humans like the the food is so graphic mm-hmm. oh my god <laughs> what is that movie yeah. yeah oh my gosh i remember uh-huh. just being like and that's like the shock and awe and i'm not easily shocked and awed anymore but yeah that one got me <laughs> like, oh, wow <laughs> what are we seeing <laughs> dad close your eyes <laughs> dad close your eyes oh but um Ty, for those of us who have not seen this movie mm-hmm. or maybe have it confused with a William Shakespeare play. Uh... <laughs> it starts with a guy's going to wrestle. <laughs> That's as you like it. Did you okay. know that one? Yes. Much Ado is he's being a Benedict is being a dick to Kate. I think that's the That's one I've... You've never seen that one. Oh, I haven't. Nope. You love it. I would? You've never seen it. Oh, yep. okay. You'd love Much Ado. Okay. There's one I saw that I got sleepy in. Um, that was All's Well That Ends Well. <gasps> That's you fell the asleep. One. I also it. forget that one. Yeah. I yep. think I don't think also it's that much ends to well do. I think stupid. All's Well That Ends Well and the first gosh, I can't even keep them straight now. Ugh, I digress. All's Well That Ends Well is the one where she sneaks into his tent to have sex with him, so then he falls back in love with her. <laughs> <laughs> Literary classic. <laughs> There's that summary. But let me give you this uh something's gotta give summary. Please. I almost forgot the title. And that's why I was like, oh, it's complicated, shoot. isn't Bye it? Bye for time. <laughs> something's gotta give is about Jack Nicholson, who is dating he's sixty three. He is dating a gal who is 29, I think is what we find out. It's Amanda Peet. Nice job. She said she's going to turn 30 soon, so that's what I was just going off of. Mm-hmm. And then he go, they go to this lake home, mm-hmm. and they're about to do it, <laughs> and he has a heart attack. Mm. He, before this, had met her, her mom, who is Diane Keaton, mm-hmm. a super sexy Diane Keaton. Oh, we can get into this a little bit so later. Much. We can get into this a little bit later. Don't mean to spoil it. But so... <laughs> Um, he meets Diane Keaton, who doesn't like him. She's a playwright. Mm-hmm. She's writing a play. She's like, she's almost like a, f- like a new age contemporary version of Neil Simon. Hmm. That's what she reminded me of. Like mm-hmm. comedies, goofy comedies with character situational stuff. Mm-hmm. That's very much what it felt like to me. Mm-hmm. So new Neil Simon is is the mother to Amanda Pete. Mm-hmm. This guy who she doesn't like has a heart attack in her house. Amanda Pete leaves. She has to take care of him while she's taking care of him. They fall in love. Nobody saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming. (laughs) They did not like each other. Little twists and turns, though, because Mm -hmm. his doctor, who has a huge crush on her as a playwright and Mm -hmm. then meets her and then becomes a love triangle, is the one and only Keanu. Keanu Reeves (laughs) is the doc. Yeah. Surprised. Very. 
I mean, I saw his name in the title track. Sure. And so a part of me thought like, okay, where are we going to go with this? Is this going to be like a, I'm into your mom, but then it works out and I end up being with Amanda Peet kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. I'm glad they didn't go with that. They like went off the beaten path a little bit. Um, do do we go all the way to the end? You can. You can do whatever you want. This okay. is your synopsis. Okay. So then they break up at one point. Diane Keaton falls in love with Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson can't say I love you back. Mm-hmm. He, he's a forever bachelor. He thinks he's an old dog who can never learn new tricks. Keanu Reeves just keeps fighting the good fight, keeps wanting to be with Diane Keaton. Finally, she like gives him a shot. They like start dating. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the movie... You, he puts a ring on the table, and you're pretty sure he's going to ask her to marry him. Yeah. And instead, she goes and meets Jack Nicholson on a bridge in Paris. Mm. Boosh. Whoa. Twists, turns, trials, trips. <laughs> I know we don't normally get to it, but you just did such a beautiful job with the story that I kind of want to work backwards a little bit. Okay. Yeah. What did you think of the ending? I didn't like it. Yeah. So yeah. Here's, about it. here's the deal. And I'll just like kind of ruin my score a little bit too, in the sense that it was going to be six points higher. Mm, mm-hmm. Literally dropped six points because of the ending. Six points. Six points. That's a big swing. Yeah, it was a big swing. But is that a swing that's going to make a difference between? I don't know. The Won't freshness you ha- of this. You'll have to wait and find out. Oh, Did man. the peaches go rotten or not? I could eat a peach for hours. <laughs> Face off, throwback. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I thought. Oh, this is so cool. We didn't get the Hollywood ending. She left with Diane, or she left with Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. And Jack Nicholson is at the bridge crying, feeling heartbreak for the first time in his life, and finally knows what it's like to be in love with somebody. Mm. And you feel like he rounded a corner, and eventually he's going to find somebody very shortly. Mm-hmm. But Diane Keaton's not the one. He blew it, you know? Yeah. But he didn't blow it. Mm-hmm. She comes back to that bridge, and then they have a moment. And he's like, and she's like, "Yeah, Keanu could see that I was in love with you, so everything's gravy. He's the greatest. You're the greatest. Let's be together." And I thought, "No, what a cop out!" <laughs> so I was very disappointed about the ending. Yeah. What'd you think? It had to. It kind of came back full circle into its romantic comedy, and you have to have a happy ending, according to somebody somewhere. I don't know who. Shakespeare wrote comedies. Rules on that. <laughs> oh, he did. Yeah. Okay, Billy. Snuck into his tent, had sex with him, they got married. <laughs> As you right. like it. Ha- or no. Happy ending. No, Alice well that oh, ends well. Oh, I guess you can't remember All's All's well that ends well, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think when I first saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, happy ending. That makes sense. But going back as an adult watching it, I just, I, I can't quite wrap my head around why she leaves this. And again, chemistry is one thing, right? So if you don't have chemistry with Keanu Reeves, this like, insanely hot 30 year old doctor like he's, i mean he is i don't know primo keanu yeah guys. and he's great like, primo he's keanu. funny he's really nice i thought his acting was top notch yeah he's i great. really did i thought he was fantastic <laughs> your dad's gonna be okay he's not my dad i'm sorry your granddad's gonna be okay <laughs> i loved keanu's performance mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sorry yeah. i'm very spitty today yeah could you not i spit right directly at you it like hit rage oh, right in the sure. shoulder Damn. I think I got some in my eye. No, you didn't. You're You're just trying to play it up for the audience. I'm not. The studio (laughs) audience. You just want that laugh button to get hit. (laughs) Applause, applause. (laughs) Snapchat. But yeah, and so I can't quite wrap my head around why she uh, goes back to this guy who's, you know, emotionally stunted. (laughs) We'll say, um, yeah, I'm glad he had a turn of heart, but it's kind of like, okay, bud, too late. Like, yeah, that's not I moved on by now. Like. I actually thought there was a happy ending mm-hmm. when he was on that bridge and he was like, here I am crying again. Mm-hmm. And he like almost, I didn't like that they played on the gender thing, but he even says like, I'm the girl. But, yeah. and I didn't really like that, <laughs> I know, but I got on, what Nancy. he was, I got what he, what he was saying as far as like, I've discovered the emotional sentimental side of myself. Mm-hmm. And I thought that that's a happy ending mm-hmm. to me. He's awoken something in himself that he never thought was possible. It's laid dormant for 50 years mm-hmm. and he's a human again. Yeah. And that to me is a happy ending. I would have liked something even in between. I would have liked a, and maybe it's not a Paris ending. Maybe it's an ending where we just know that they're they're friends, and then maybe there's like that sly, like little, like wink, like, but we might hook up again <laughs> sure. because you okay. know, but we're cool like that. Something would have been great. Again, she doesn't have to go with Keanu if she's not in love with him. I'm not saying to stay with that because he's supposed to be the guy that checks all the boxes, and he's 30 years old. <laughs> uh, but like. At the same time, she had grown in so much confidence, uh-huh. and 
and strength. And a part of me was like, don't lose that. Yeah. Don't give that back to him, yeah. even though he helped unlock it. So it's ugh, it's so tricky. Yeah. It's tricky. Did it drop your score? Or um, were you okay? Were you satisfied with the ending? You're like, no, I can live with this. I don't know what my score would have been before. That's a really good question. Okay. Like, do you feel myself. do you feel satisfied? I feel not satisfied with the ending. Mm-hmm. I think I, I already knew what the ending was, so okay. it, it's hard for me to not be like act surprised sure. and be like, oh, yeah. I, like, like I didn't know it was coming. Like I knew the ending, so yep. um, I would do it differently, but I would maybe do something in the in-between mm-hmm. of, of that. And it's not a, a complete write-off of, of Nicholson's character. Sure. Although okay. I like his arc, too. I think he's, I do too. it's nice that he has a change of heart towards yep. the end. He kind of goes soul-searching and goes around all of his ex-girlfriends and tries to figure out like why he was such a schmuck. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, because he didn't, he kind of, after he has all these heart attacks, I think he starts to reflect a little bit on life and like, I'm going to die alone. Yep. And uh-huh. I, do I want that? Am I happy? Do I just tell myself I'm happy? So it's it's interesting. What I like about um, what this does differently than other films is one, the age piece. We mm-hmm. have a love story about people who are, we'll say, past their prime, right? Probably in their prime, truly. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, when I look at Diane Keaton's life in this film, I'm like, God, she is in her prime right now. I think she's in her prime, too. Isn't it amazing? I think, (laughs) okay, this was a thing I started last season, and I don't want to get weird about it, but I've been on this this train where I'm like, hey, we need to promote how beautiful women age. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick. Like, women, like, men are able to, like, get sexier with age. People Mm -hmm. are always like, you're like a fine wine. But with women, we, like, never do that so i'm here mm-hmm. to propagate this idea mm-hmm. that women get more beautiful with age too diane keaton at the age of 50 something i'm sure yeah. you have her age 53 i believe at the age of 53 has never looked better <laughs> never 56 sorry 56, 56. even older she even can better. she can do the retiree and menu at the at the restaurant the seniors. 55 and up the senior dinner never looked better mm-hmm Let's promote that idea. Let's celebrate it. It's awesome. She looks so freaking good. <laughs> well, even just looks wise, her life is amazing right now. Like at the prime of your life, as far as you know, she's writing and going back and forth from the market in yep. her beautiful Hamptons home, <laughs> and I'm sure she's doing all these like just she's living my dream essentially. Sure. A lot of people's yep. dream probably. Mm-hmm. Studying French, learning Italian, and she travels like it's it's something to aspire to. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. <laughs> All right. So the director of this, uh-huh. Nancy Myers. I believe this is our first Nancy Meyer films with. That's what you said. Yep. I need to take a, just a second to apologize, listeners, because to be honest, in the world of romantic comedies, it's a bit blasphemous that I have not brought forth any Nancy Meyer. Films. I knew nothing of who Nancy Meyer was. Oh, you I will. did not know Nancy <laughs> Meyer at all. At Tall? A tall. A tall. So if I would ask you things that she's done before, do you have any ideas? No. I would guess as good as it gets, but I don't know if that's right. Nope. Okay. Nope. No. That's no a, idea. That's a decent guess, though. No idea. So Nancy Meyer actually started- She did not do Sleepless in Seattle. She, she... did not do You've Got Mail. She did <laughs> nope. not do Best Friend's Wedding. <laughs> right. Right. Good. Good. I feel good about all those. You're, ne- you're yeah. You're checking it down. some off. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, let me just. I'm gonna throw out some things that she has done, and then okay. I'll kind of go more into her backstory and how she got started. Mm-hmm. Um, a little movie called Father of the Bride. Oh. She is the screenwriter for that. Okay. Her husband directed it. Okay. So they kind of were a co a co team for the a Myers. Bit. Mm-hmm, the Myers. Yep. Um, well, actually, and her husband, I have his name here somewhere, but it's not Myers. Oh, his last okay. name is something different. Uh, her directorial debut was the 1998 remake of a classic movie that your wife loves very, very deeply. Oh, um, we Preacher's just, Wife. Uh, no, we have oh, you and I it. haven't watched this. So good, oh. good call though. Love and basketball. Um, <laughs> this person, this star, uh-huh. just got married recently. We found out J-Lo? on E News. J-Lo's not married. Oh, no, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Shot in the dark. <laughs> Parent Trap. Parent the Trap. Parent Trap. There oh, it is. yeah. Oh, Rich does it, love that isn't movie. Isn't it so fun sitting in the hot oh, seat? Oh, Lindsay Lohan did just get married. I remember seeing that yesterday. Yeah, shout out to you, Linz. Congrats. Yeah, congrats. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay Lohan's Parent Trap was Nancy Meyer's first directorial debut. And you would say she did? I thought she did great. Yeah, you would say that because you love that movie. It's it's a great movie. It's a great remake. Have yep. you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. And? 
Yeah, it's all right. Okay. I didn't like the original Parent Trap, and the other, the remake is better, but it's it's just okay. Okay. Well, you can just leave that at the door. <laughs> in this closet, we love the Parent Trap. Fifty percent. <laughs> no. Fifty percent. That's movie. not a fifty percent movie. No Maybe way. Maybe a little cuter than that. Might be up sixty percent tops. So. Oh my gosh! Insane. Not <laughs> not a chance. Dennis Quaid, also in his prime. Yeah, he's all right. Oh, Natasha Richardson, gorgeous. Is that just the that's the gorgeous. girl? That's the mom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's kind of like a, a Keaton type as well in that too, kind of quirky. Uh, but actually, she's a lot more sophisticated though and very polished. So, so maybe not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this film, which be- went on to become the most <laughs> successful film directed by a woman at the time, mm-hmm. can you guess? This was in two thousand. She directed it. Uh huh. Most successful. Most successful film my, directed by a woman at that time. It made 183 million in the U.S. and 370 worldwide. It feels like Julia Roberts would have been in it. Uh no, but it had Aaron two Brockovich. Pretty big stars. That's good. That's a really good guess. Okay. I don't know if that's a 2000 guess. Um, this was a comedy. Yep. And it was kind of from the man's perspective, although we could only what women want. hear woman in his head. Yes, it was what women want. Yes, yes with your boy Mel Gibson Mel. and Helen Hunt. That movie, very funny. She directed that and wrote that as well. Yeah, yeah. She does a lot of that. She even like on some of these ones. I was listening to an interview, and they were like, "Oh, well, you directed that." She's like, "Well, I wrote it too." <laughs> like, she's like, "I wasn't, I wasn't credited, but I wrote it." <laughs> really? Why didn't she take credit for that? I don't know. Long story. Oh, she okay. kind of said that. She had a kind of, kind of complicated long story, but I wrote it too. Oh, okay. I'm I'm wondering if someone like gave her a, a gist of it, and she's like, nope, nope, nope. And by the time she oh, got through it, it was pretty much that sure. It was... Like she had rewritten it pretty much. Could okay. Be. Gotcha. Um. Also, the holiday. That's hers. I know you're not as big of a fan, <laughs> and yet that 2006. That's a very big hit for okay. a lot of people. Hey, let's let's actually sit with holiday for just a split second. No. Everybody loves the holiday. Like mm-hmm. it's like a new holiday classic that it's not new, it's an old, but at the mm-hmm. same time I feel like it's really picked up steam in the last few years. I've seen it on a lot of best Christmas lists. Mm-hmm. I've seen people talk about it a lot in such glowing light. Mm-hmm. The holidays acting <laughs> is pretty bad. Even out of Kate Winslet, who's pretty good <laughs> as actress. I mean, they're all uh, pretty great as an Yeah, actress. pretty great. Pretty one of the best actresses of all time. There we go. A-list. That sounds better. Top tier. <laughs> Top there tier with uh, Emma, Emma, Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson. Yeah. Top tier. Top tier. <laughs> and I feel like in this movie, the, I actually thought this while we were watching it. I was mm-hmm. like, you know, the acting is really pretty good in this movie. I wish the acting in The Holiday was better. And I feel mm-hmm. like that movie would have been like this. Mm-hmm. So it's not surprising that these movies are kind of linked by the same director slash writer mm-hmm. because I had this thought sure. that came while we were watching. I was like, mm-hmm. I wish the acting in The Holiday was as good as this. What what drew you to think of those two things? Was there something about the way the film was shot? Like, what made you think, like, huh? Like, the, what made you think of it from a similar... I'm just so curious because I the think... The small amount of characters yeah. in a, in stationary yes. settings. Yes. Um, and the some of the camera angles okay. and how people look at each other. Uh-huh. Like, it's a small thing, yeah. but, like, for some reason, it made me think of the holiday. Yeah. Um, for me, like, when you go on to a film set of a Nancy Myers film, yep. you tend to feel like that's where you're at. She sure. has a very specific style, uh-huh. and it's something that she's she's known for, not just in the film world, but also, like, in the design world, mm-hmm. in art, the architecture world. People just eat her set designs up because she does a lot of the work like she will she'll say that when she goes to write something um she creates a floor pl- a floor plan mm-hmm. of where of her actors homes or her characters homes i guess mm-hmm. um because she wants to know how do they get up to get their tea in the middle of the night what does that look like okay. or you know she's just very wait um, who has tea in the middle of the night I don't know. you can tell rach is not a tea drinker <laughs> <laughs> People get tea in the middle of the night. You're gonna pee your pants, girl. Do you realize how fast tea goes through you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, I guess. <laughs> You've never had tea. <laughs> I I'm not a big tea drinker in the middle of the night. That's uh, true. Nancy would be laughing in your face. <laughs> she would spit on your shoulder just like I did. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um but yes, her sets are usually very aesthetically pleasing. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. She also considers her set to kind of function as a character in her film. Mm, mm-hmm. 
And I looked for more on that. That was one of those like little blurbs on like Wiki. I was like, okay, f- give me the article that she said that in. And I couldn't find it because it wasn't available any longer. But what yep. do you think she means by that? So say say this statement again. I kind of have an idea, but I want to I want to hear it one more time. Yeah, it says that she considers her set to function as a character in her film. Well, I think that's the stationary set thing. Okay. I think that's a where this movie is going to take place in the holiday in basically two locations mm-hmm. or in this movie it's basically at the lake home mm-hmm. like we go other places but it's pretty much yeah, at pretty that lake at home about 50 percent at least yeah and because of that it feels like it's such it's such a a specific location mm-hmm. that i think we figure out who these characters are mm-hmm. so let's take diane keaton's lake home let's. it's very organized mm-hmm. in some capacity yeah. but her desk is a mess sure. so it's like the perceived get, have everything together mm-hmm. but on the inside she's kind of a mess you see her in her most intimate location yeah, I like that. at the mm-hmm. desk and the whole like kind of hoity-toity look mm-hmm. is somewhat like a, a part <laughs> that character as well like sees themselves as like somewhat of an upper class i think both characters do yeah and like yes, what he drives and do. stuff too so it's mm-hmm. like this is where I wonder if there's a disconnect with a lot of people who would go to see this movie. Mm-hmm. They'd be like, screw these rich douchebags and like what their lives are all about. Yeah. I don't care about the rich folks. So it does very much present like, this mm-hmm. is how the other half lives. Mm-hmm. And they go through their own trials and tribulations. <laughs> and isn't it fun to see that? That they're just <laughs> like you are, even though they're rich. <laughs> you make a really great point. And that is something that she has more recently gotten criticism of. Is is that like she presents these stories and yep, they're they're great for the the women uh, that she writes for, um, but oftentimes they are straight white rich women who mm-hmm. tend to be the leads in a lot of her films. Like think about the holiday. Think about how wealthy Cameron Diaz was. Yeah, yep. Her think, house is wild. Yeah. Think about. Yep. Um, I mean, think to the Parent Trap. Think uh-huh. about the yep. dad they're... owns a vineyard. Yeah, like, yep. it's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, even in Father of the Bride. Yeah, they have a what big house. What does Steve yep. Martin do? It's incredible. <laughs> it's true, yep. I love that house. Yep. That's a that's like someone's dream house. It's probably a little too many rooms for me to clean personally, but that's a gorgeous mm-hmm. house, right? So, yeah, so she is kind of writing for, um, I w- I'm not even going to say upper middle class because it's, it's there's, no, there's nothing middle about no, it. No, this is not <laughs> upper is middle upper, class. Upper class. <laughs> this is upper, upper class. Upper class trying to see middle? I don't know. No, not even. Well, they go grocery shopping at like the at market. The, at the specialized market where they talk French. <laughs> <laughs> Will you say, uh, can I have some fromage, please? That's I have that cheese. Point. That's a good point. They're not normal. <laughs> they're not, that's not <laughs> They're a bunch of psychos. Yeah, right. You heard it. You were like, she just ordered some cheese. Yeah. You were translating oh, for me. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> just say, just say. Just sweet, just sweet. No, not just sweet. Just say. Oh, I know, I know. See? Not I am, I am. <laughs> <laughs> you know French. <laughs> Admitted, you know French. <laughs> Je ne parle français. Uh, one of her more recent films. This one's a bit of a doozy. You and I have a memory of watching this. I believe with my family, my mom oh, and dad. Oh no, the intern. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Another moment where we had to watch like a simulated. It's not even. They're not even doing anything. He's trying to get his tie out or shoe or something stupid yeah. where he's down and it looks like he's they're just simulating like a sexual act of uh-huh, oral uh-huh. and it's so awkward. so awkward so awkward and we're Robert sitting there De Niro. we're watching this with Rachel's parents and just like <laughs> oh my gosh I can't believe we're watching this right now dude no joke that movie is in the top 10 worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. I hated that movie. Mm-hmm. That was garbage. Yeah. All their acting was garbage. Script was trite. <laughs> dialogue was awful. <laughs> garbage. Throw that throw that movie in the fire. How would you have felt if the two leads were Tina Fey and Michael Caine? <laughs> <laughs> was that what's originally going to happen? <laughs> yeah. Intrigued. <laughs> Much better than Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, and for a bit after Tina Fey, it was gonna be Reese Witherspoon for a bit, but I would stick with the Tina Fey train. I would too. Yeah, I would too. I'm. I would give it a second viewing. I would too. But the Michael Caine part is really because Tina Fey and Hathaway. I mean, like, y- you just get different flavors of. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's like that much better of a performance, even though I didn't like Anne Hathaway in that movie. Yeah, I would think Tina Fey would bring some humor to it though that you yeah. weren't expecting. Sure. Like, oh, that was funny. Yeah, but still, but but very... Michael Caine is the one that I'm like, ooh, what can you do with this role, Michael? <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? Yeah, I'm more curious than what Robert De Niro brought to the table. <laughs> for sure. Gosh, terrible. 
Um, so Nancy Myers became interested in screenwriting after seeing Devil this... Wears Prada. <laughs> <laughs> no, and she's not connected with that, which is so interesting because one of the sets in the show is the Devil Wears Prada house. The one that Anne Hathaway has? No, the, in this movie. Yep. No, uh, I know that, but I'm talking the about one that Jack Nicholson y- owns. Yep, and who is it belong to in Devil Wears Prada? Oh, it belongs to um, Meryl. Meryl, yeah. Meryl. Meryl. Did, yeah. Oh, Meryl. <laughs> it's definitely not Anne Hathaway's oh. home. <laughs> She's got a little hole in the wall. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I digress there. Uh, <laughs> fun connection. <laughs> I know. I even brought that up. I said, "Oh, here's a fun fact," but I'm probably not going to bring it up. But here we are. And here we are. No, I was going to say, after seeing the movie The Graduate, oh. it really inspired her to get into screenwriting. So, digression, anecdote time. <laughs> I'm going to start putting quarters in for how many times I've said the word digression, but I'm going to add for you, too. Okay. so <laughs> I'm at $1.25. The Graduate. <laughs> yes. Rach and I are just buddies. Mm-hmm. And I forget who texted who. <laughs> the... It doesn't matter. Neither here nor there. One of us texted the other one and said, hey, The Graduate's on. And I was, and let's pretend you texted me. Okay. And I was like, cool. And then we watched The Graduate together, but in different houses, texting each other throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Been like, oh yeah, look at this part. Oh my god, how funny was that? And then <laughs> didn't we call each other afterwards and talked? I don't remember. I, I think we to did. Think that we were talking to each other on the phone. Maybe. And The Graduate was on. Maybe that happened too. And then maybe we texted later on as we continued okay. to watch it. Yeah, maybe? that might be the accurate story. Yeah. Something with The Graduate Something. texting Something. and a phone mm-hmm. call, and we were just buddies. But I was so in love <laughs> i was like oh my gosh i'm pretty much watching the graduate with rage at the end i hope we just jump on a bus and run away from everyone <laughs> <laughs> but it's sad yeah only yeah. when their like smiles fade and they realize what they just did yeah that's true <laughs> before the smiles <laughs> before fade. the smiles fade it's a great time <laughs> um so myers and keaton had actually worked together prior to this back in 1987 there was a film called Baby Boom. Oh. Do you know what that's about? Never heard of it. No, never heard of it? Nope. Do you want to give it a go or do you want me just to tell you? Um, okay, I'll just tell you it's real quickly about <laughs> real uh, quickly. a boomer who <laughs> inherits a bunch of money mm-hmm. and she's a young single mom. Uh, I mean, you got some parts of it, right? So okay. single mom. Um, well, Diane Keaton is a career gal yep. and she ends up um, I'm going to use the word inheriting, but I know that's not the right word. Her cousin dies and leaves her her child. Oh, and so okay. she all of a sudden becomes a single mom of her cousin's child. So uh-huh. she inherits this baby. Um, and then she has to like balance a career and being a new mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Baby boom. 19- Baby boom. 1987. Go check that out. <laughs> <laughs> they also worked with each other in Father of the Bride. Do you remember yes, Diane Keaton in yep, that? Yes, because she's the mom. So cute in that. Yep. And Not then, as cute as this, though. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> I would agree. She's right? Actually, and a part of it when for she's me in is, her... the, is the clothing style. I think this is a way cuter sure. time for her. But, but in her, too. Mm-hmm. Think about her in her 20s in the Godfather movies. Mm-hmm. She's not even near as attractive as she was in this movie. Interesting. She's not. Yeah. Not even close. <laughs> not she even close? She gets hotter with age. Well, how do you feel about First Wives Club? Because Myers turned down directing First Wives oh Club. Oh my god! Can you imagine? That would have been interesting. That would have been interesting, but I'll be honest, I really enjoyed First Wives Club, mm-hmm. and so I didn't really want to change a direction. Yeah. I sure. enjoyed what we got. First Wives Club was the bomb.com. And Diane Keaton's very cute in that, too. Mm-hmm. But I think she's even hotter than this. Here. Yeah. How, was that 01? Two years before this? First Wives Club? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember now. Go back and listen to that episode. Yeah, Find out. Find out for yourself. We're not going to do all your research for you, you <laughs> goobers. I told you this once. I'm not telling you again. <laughs> <laughs> I moved on. <laughs> um, But the premise for this film mm-hmm. actually started as what's called a premise movie. Do you know what a premise movie is? No it's idea. like we no. basically concept have an movie? idea. Yeah, like a concept. Like so the concept was guy falls in love with uh daughter's boyfriend. Okay. Oh sorry, I mixed it mom up. Mom falls in love with daughter's yeah, boyfriend. Yeah, I flipped that up. Yep. Or guy no, falls okay. in love with girlfriend's mom. Yeah, okay. Either way, it works. Yeah. That was the concept. Hey, and seed. Fountains of Wayne or whatever, they took the same concept, made a, a glorious song out of it. And what was that song? Stacy's Mom. Stacy's Mom. <laughs> it's got it going on. This is kind of like Stacy's Mom. This is, ex- I felt like this was a full feature film adaptation of Stacy's Mom, the music video. 
<laughs> so Nancy sat on that concept for uh-huh. like 10 years, like was writing other things, just had the idea, but didn't, it wasn't flushed out yet as mm-hmm. to like what to do with that idea. The script didn't come to her. Um, she ended up getting divorced. Okay. Her husband before was a director. Um, oh, I just had his name, Boogers. Uh, <laughs> oh, Boogers. Oh, Boogers. Nope. Lost it. No, it's okay. Direct. Make it up. Make it up. <gasps> Charles Shire. Oh, did you really find it? I did. Oh, shoot. I did. Yes. They worked, um, they met when they uh, did the movie Private Benjamin, which is a Goldie Hawn movie. Oh, okay. Never heard of it. Never heard of her? No. Who's Goldie Hawn? Goldie Hawn. Uh, have I had any work done? <laughs> First Wives Club? <laughs> uh, have I a lot done? of First Wives Club shout outs here. Love it. It deserves probably well, a rewatch. That, <laughs> I feel like there is a connection between these two movies as well. For sure. Yeah. yeah. This and First Wives Club? Yeah. It's obviously many years later, and yet there's still a little feel to it, isn't there? Yeah. Yep. First Wives is a little more goofy. Mm, very And goofy. sometimes the slapstickiness of this movie felt a little out of place. Mm. With But the the witty dialogue mm-hmm. was tops. So it's probably a little wittier dialogue than First sure. Wives. Yep. But the slapstickiness in First Wives made sense. And here it maybe felt a little out of place sometimes. I can feel that. Yeah. Because I think... It's not that Keaton and Nicholson aren't both good at the slapstick comedy, mm-hmm. but I think I agree. Like, there were sometimes, and this kind of gets into the reviews a little bit, but there were sometimes we went like a little too sitcom y. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Sitcom mm-hmm. is, sitcom-y. is absolutely correct. I stole that. I did not say that word. Rach, that you there. are so wise. <laughs> I've never heard anybody put an apostrophe Y on the word sitcom <laughs> to make a sitcom y. That's great. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great. Mr. Sanborn, did you take any Viagra today? Mr. Sanborn? No. No Viagra. Okay, good. Just need to be sure because I put nitroglycerin into your drip. And if you had taken Viagra, the combination could be fatal. (laughs) Um, When Myers did end up beginning to write this and come Mm -hmm. up with the idea, she wrote it with these two actors in mind. So much so that when she would get writer's block, she would look up pictures of them online (laughs) and she would put them all over her like mood board Uh, (laughs) when she was writing. And then it was, she's like, okay, it'll come back. So it was always going to be these two then. That's who she wanted. And at this point, she got to a point in her career where she could kind of say, she could say it as long as she's, you know, as long as they're available, but she could kind of say who she wanted for the roles. Okay. Can we take a small... Tangent? Tangent. Maybe. I want to ask you this question. Okay. Would you have liked to see anybody else hmm. in either of these roles? Oh, that's a good question. Um, would anybody else? I, I wondered if the Jack Nicholson role could have been played by somebody different. Maybe someone a little bit more handsome? A little bit. Because, okay, bit? what rating do you give Jack Nicholson? In this? Yeah. I mean, as far as handsomeness. Handsomeness. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a Jack kind of gal even though he can be very charming but he just always what do you give him i give him a four because he's four huh yeah wow what do you give his butt oh his butt looked great okay didn't his butt oh so jack nicholson tell tell him why we got to see his butt in this show (laughs) because jack nicholson gets on some drugs when after his heart attack and he's wandering (laughs) around like drugged up in the the hospital with the hospital gown with his hospital gown open (laughs) now here's the thing jack nicholson is hairy He's got a very hairy chest, Mm -hmm. but his butt is as smooth as a baby's bottom. (laughs) And here's something I don't understand. You'll have to explain this to me. When did we decide in Hollywood, you can be as hairy as you want to be, but if you're going to show your butt in a Mm -hmm. TV show or movie, Mm -hmm. if you're a dude, you better shave that puppy, just bick it down to the wire. It's got to be so smooth that you could eat eggs off of it. Like, (laughs) why did we make this choice? (laughs) Why did we say, oh, it's a hairy butt? No, he's, it's like, oh, he's a hairy guy. Oh, he's got a hairy butt. That would have been funny. I don't know why we decided you can't have a hairy butt in yeah. film. Yeah, and it was tan too. Did you notice that? Yeah. Like, it wasn't like. And it kind of was like a small little butt. He mm-hmm. almost has like a no butt like me. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, your butt's way better than Jack Oh Nicholson's my gosh. Is. Let but me just say. But it's not as smooth. <laughs> <laughs> No, nope, it's not. TMI. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> yeah, now that you've brought his butt up, I'm going to drop it a little bit more. I'm going to say like a two. Okay. A three. Because he's 
very charismatic. I can't get past that. Like, Jack yep. Nicholson is charismatic. Sure. And he, in real life, dates a lot of younger women because oh. he can, apparently. Yeah. Did that make, did that storyline make sense to you? Or did you think, like, oh, he's rich, he's charismatic, mm-hmm. of course he dates all these younger women? Um, I guess so, because I think as long as there are rich old men out there, there are young women willing to date them willing to date like somebody who takes care of them and is witty and fun to be around and Mm -hmm. stuff i think yeah i think i was bothered by it at first but then i then i grew to be like no it's fine it's not real yeah it is real (laughs) it's not like adam sandler who looks like a douchebag and he's a construction worker and dating jessica beale and kate beckinsale (laughs) at the time same time or something like that yeah you know so there was part of me that was like okay i can get through this you know like he's rich i can get through he's very rich he's very rich yep they're all very rich they're all Super That's what rich. we've decided. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 20th Century Fox actually declined to make this because it said, quote unquote, thought that the leads were too old to be bankable. <laughs> <laughs> That's really shocking, though, yeah. because as good as it gets, had to be right around this time. And wasn't he nominated for an Oscar? Uh, I want to like say a, that was a bit earlier. That so was like probably a, in within the Within five years, though, right? Yeah, like 98 on. Yeah. And so yeah. Mm-hmm. I just feel like Jack Nicholson pretty much was the face of that film. Mm-hmm. And so why couldn't he be the face of this film? That's a good point because that kind of deals with the older love a little bit. I mean, not Helen Hunt so much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he is he is older in that. And First Wives Club, I think, was just a few years before this, too. So we had mm-hmm. seen Keaton in a prominent role. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, that's so silly. I mean, really, it is because other people said like, oh, yeah, sure, we'll we'll do it. And what about all the Viagra menopause jokes? Like they have so many jokes about being old and trying to do it, <laughs> putting glasses on while you're trying to do it, checking oh. your heart, your heart pressure, your blood pressure, all that stuff. It doesn't play if it's Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. You no, know what I mean? No, it's not funny then. It has to be old people. Yeah. And then really, when you think about a market that's not oversaturated, like this age group with yeah. romance is not oversaturated so truth yeah tell a new story uh-huh. like we're you know we're ready we're ready for it is it like as cool to watch the, them make out as like a younger couple no no but... except for diane keen looks amazing so yeah <laughs> que- a question mark i guess yeah i guess that's more of a me thing because she's kissing jack nicholson so yeah he doesn't do much for me you got but... a hairy chest and a smooth butt to work with yeah if that does it for you that's great then <laughs> Um, did you know that Keaton and Nicholson were actually in a film before this together? Nope. And I don't they were in believe... a little shop of horrors. <laughs> oh, that would have been fun. <laughs> she played a little girl in it. They were in a movie in 1981 called Reds, and they actually have an affair in that film. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's Warren Beatty is the gotcha. is the husband character. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of a period piece, if I recall, from the trailer that I watched of it, so oh. I could talk very briefly about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. Please ask me no more questions. This is like when I watched the trailer to Cocktail and thought, like, I can talk about this Tom Cruise movie now in depth because I've seen the trailer. I feel really good about it. You sounded so knowledgeable when you threw out Cocktail. I was just like, wow, Ty. No, all about Cocktail. You did your research. <laughs> very, very knowledgeable. Um, when Nancy asked Jack to do this film, mm-hmm. um, she invited him over to her house for dinner and he had already read through the script. And so she says what he likes to do is he likes to get out his little golf pencil and he was going to go through like with some notes or mm-hmm. things like that. He got to the end of it and said, I have no notes, zero notes and the whole thing. Isn't that kind of crazy? I thought the script was pretty well composed. Mm-hmm. There's some story beats and stuff that I had problems with, mm-hmm. but if we're talking about dialogue, yeah, I thought the dialogue was pretty legit. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have any complaints with any of the dialogue. Yeah, that was good. What are your thoughts on if these people, if the actors improvised or not? I could tell sometimes because there's some overlapping of lines in a mm-hmm. way that seemed very natural and real, mm-hmm. and unless they just rehearsed a lot. Like there was a moment mm-hmm. on the beach with Keaton and Nicholson when they go on their first walk together. Mm-hmm. And there was some very natural beat to beat work that was happening there mm-hmm. that I was like, eh, I don't think that's on the page. Mm-hmm. Or or they rehearsed enough where they were like, hey, let's jump each other a little bit on these mm-hmm. lines. Mm-hmm. So either way, it was very impressive. Yeah. Um. So I would guess there was a little bit. Yeah. There could have been a little bit, but typically Nancy Myers is like, she tells no. her actors that no improv- improvising. No it's on improv. No improv. <laughs> You do it. what I tell you to. <laughs> I mean, she says it jokingly, but part of me is like, no, I think 
I think she's one hundred percent real. <laughs> I don't think she. Well, her any dialogue is so good that mm-hmm. that makes sense. That she's like, "Hey, don't muck up my dialogue. Just trust me." <laughs> I wrote it this, there for a reason. This works, and I picked you because I know you can deliver it how I want it. Yep. In my head. But here's what I would say: mm-hmm. Not everybody can deliver it, though. Yeah, that's true. Case in point: Cameron Diaz. She can't deliver it. Oh. She couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Even Kate Winslet kind of faltered on that mm-hmm. in the holiday. Mm-hmm. She's mm-hmm. not super great in the holiday, mm-hmm. so not everybody can nail it. Well. Jack Black, though, nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) Jula, eh. (laughs) So great. So great. (laughs) Um, But to be in this film, Jack had to turn a film down. Uh, I didn't put the year on this, but obviously it was around this time. (laughs) Yeah, can you imagine? (laughs) I'm disappointed he would be. Gosh, dang it. (laughs) Give me. Uh, no, I have never seen this film. It could probably be a Christmas film, I suppose. <laughs> it looks terrible, but okay. Um, I think you've seen it. Have you seen Bad Santa? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have. It's, I mean, it's kind of funny, but like, it's not very good. It's a, it was a one timer for me, but mm-hmm. I'll see it on still around Christmas time, like on FX or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, it has a perfect channel to play it, right? And uh, so I have seen it. Yes. <laughs> Moral of the story is I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I just had to like I'm get that a, out I'm of I'm not a Billy Bob guy, but I, I've seen it. I must confess yeah. I have seen I it. I have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> so some random on set facts. Um, Diane Keaton did something that nowadays we would say is unforgivable. She added a kiss. She added a kiss. When? When was the kiss? Do you remember the scene when they're in New York after dinner yep. and they're um, they're crying and she's telling him that she loved him yes. and she's heartbroken. Oh, yeah. When she, before, right before she gets in the taxi. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. And like goes away. Yes. She adds a kiss there. Oh. And it was like one of the few improvs, I guess, that Nancy Myers is like, yep, I like that. We're going to keep that in. Mm-hmm. So okay. that stayed. Obviously, Nicholson you know, wasn't too upset about hey, it. There are times where I think you can have a scene partner and you could say like, hey, I feel safe and comfortable around you mm-hmm. and we're in a trusting, loving environment that like if you feel an improv for that, I think you can have those discussions. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that the impulse to kiss somebody at a certain spot can't be explored, mm-hmm. but I just think you got to talk about it beforehand. You can't just throw it in. Mm-hmm. You could be like, oh, man, I really wanted to kiss you there. Mm-hmm. What do we think about that? Like, can we talk about it? Mm. You can do that. Mm-hmm. There's a right. There's a better way to do that. Oh my gosh! Do you want to hear something crazy? Sure. Okay. <laughs> we were talking about tongue kissing in Top Gun, right? <laughs> yes. All the tongue kisses. Uh huh. I didn't see a lot of tongue kisses here. There were a lot of just like natural open mouth kissing, nothing weird. <laughs> so I was in intimacy class mm-hmm. a, a week ago, mm-hmm. and they were talking about how and the rule is you're never supposed to add tongue right i've always thought that was a rule too it's like you don't add tongue to your scene partner that's disgusting mm-hmm. don't do it it just crosses a boundary you shouldn't do it mm-hmm. in intimacy class you know what they said what you can add tongue they said that that's a you thing mm-hmm. and that we have made this a societal thing that for some people when they kiss they might naturally kiss with tongue mm-hmm. and so to tell them that they can't kiss with tongue in a theater performance uh-huh. that that is actually like making them not be truthful to themselves and so they should have the opportunity to be able to kiss their partner with tongue now they should be able to talk about it and be like hey i don't want to kiss with tongue but that is not a rule oh. they're like we need to get rid of this as a rule that's your compartment that's what you say is a rule that's not a rule across the board no. we need to get rid of that language I think it should be a rule that's what I thought I was like <laughs> who needs to kiss with tongue <laughs> it literally adds zero to the scene it it's literally just adds uncomfortable zero. for your partner yeah honestly. I mean unless it's a film where you're really zoomed in and you want to be able to show those tongues wrestling yeah like Top Gun yep like let's get but in but it there. was dark in that scene I actually don't think you needed the tongue in that scene well, either I saw it I, I know saw it saw very it. clearly yeah la, la, la. <laughs> I like to see the tongues wrestling like two eels in the water. <laughs> they sure were. <laughs> um, also, though, during that scene, that scene where um, Keaton's kind of like confessing, like, I thought I could be okay with this, but I'm not. I'm heartbroken. I'm in love with you. Mm-hmm. Um, she was so believable in it that Jack Nicholson thought that she loved him. <laughs> so much so that he went to Nancy Myers and said, Diane told me she loved me. And Nancy goes, yeah, I wrote that line. (laughs) He's like, oh, yeah, okay. Taxi? Erica, she's just a friend. Oh, yeah, 
She looks like a real buddy kind of girl. Come on. Just a dinner. Harry, look. Here's the problem. I really like you. I really like you. Yeah, but I love you like you. I do. I love you. Like, but he was just so... He really thought that she was in love with him. Here's the thing. <laughs> they had such an... They had to do so much intimate work mm -hmm. in this. So much. And it's so much just the two of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they had fun on set. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there was a moment where he was like... I don't know if I'm falling for her, but I think she might be falling for me. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like when yeah. you're around somebody, even if you're not feeling it, you might think, even though it's not true always, you're like, dude, I think so-and-so's really fucking got the hots for me because I'm super <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I know I've been in that situation before. And then like at the end of the process, I find out they started dating another cast member. I was like, oh, they didn't have anything for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Just kidding. <laughs> and in that moment, you feel relief. Mm. But also a tinge of sadness. You're like, oh, what about me, though? Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Nobody has a crush on me in this cast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hon, I've got a crush on you. Yeah, I know, but you have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in interviews, whenever they've had to speak to the other one, they've always been very gracious and very loving about each other so i i love that i love there wasn't um like any drama or weirdness there's no stories about them hating each other or mm -hmm. not getting along i think um it helps a little bit from an acting standpoint that they saw um, each other naked <laughs> they, oh my gosh are we gonna talk about <laughs> we have to the fact that so not only did we see jack nicholson's butt for a hot second but we saw keaton full frontal we saw she flashed nudity and there it was just there I had forgotten about it. It was a surprise. Um, let's talk about the essentialness of that. Do we think that was essential? I don't think it was essential. Yeah. Um, Keaton's the hottest she's ever been. So, I mean, was it cool? Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're just, just going to talk about She looked amazing. She looks amazing. So, it's not that, but it's just that <laughs> but flash of nakedness. And the way they set it up, they set it up like... Um, shoulders up mm -hmm. and the whole all the setup shots yeah and so you think like she's gonna I thought she was gonna look out the window and he was gonna be looking through the window and be like oh shoot like he, from like <laughs> across the it. way mm -hmm. and instead of their w seeing each other through the windows no he's actually like in the hallway of her almost to her bedroom and mm -hmm. they see each other naked and I think the reason they did it is because it's so startling and I think it's supposed to shock you as a viewer <laughs> and be like oh my gosh I can't believe you actually see Diane Keaton naked the exact reaction we're having right now <laughs> Well, was it essential? They could have got the same bang for their buck to just show shoulders up and yeah. see her reaction and be like, ah! And yeah. he's like, oh! And she's Even like, ah! like her says she's like running into the bathroom yep. or something. One of my favorite moments, though, is so Jack Nicholson like looks at her and he goes, oh! And he closes his eyes and then he looks at her again and does like a up, down, <laughs> oh! <laughs> and just the fact that he looks again is so and funny. And then he goes, I didn't see anything except your boobs or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that gotta be. <laughs> that elicited a large reaction yeah, from both me of too. us. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Tykeen's naked. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a deleted scene in France, uh -huh. in Paris, I guess, um, that Jack Nicholson was really sad that got cut. Okay. <gasps> Let me paint the picture for you. They're at a karaoke bar. Mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson gets up to sing La Vie en Rose in French. When was this going to happen? In Paris. Yeah, I know, but when? Before or after the restaurant? Oh, Ty. When you have a deleted scene, you don't know like in what relationship. So, but I'm asking happen. because like, w is it they're still reconnecting? Before Keanu gets there, or is Keanu with them now? You know mm, what I mean? Like, that's a great question. I, I don't have any answers for you there. Okay. I'm going to guess that this is like a post-dinner thing. So here's one thing. This scene would have been really cool mm -hmm. if they didn't end up together. Mm -hmm. And instead, they're just buddies, and <gasps> yeah. they go out, and he sings this song, and she knows, oh my gosh, he really is in love with me. He loves me. But he still, she still goes back with Keanu, but she just realizes like he's discovered so much about himself that he can actually love. Mm -hmm. And if that's the ending. That could be your ending without any like sort of mm -hmm. closure of seeing them get together. You just mm -hmm. know like, wow, that could change here. We don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Thought about that. Or I thought on that bridge, what mm -hmm. if while well, he's at the bridge and he's crying and Keaton's left, 
What if like an old gal like walks over and she's like standing by the bridge too and she's older Mm -hmm. and he like looks at her and you see like he's open to the opportunity of dating somebody his own age now. Mm -hmm. Like that's another thing that they could have done to like give you closure and sense of change. I like that too. You just didn't have to have them get together. We (laughs) didn't need them to get together. It was okay. We would have, I think you're right. I think that maybe would have elevated the movie as a whole. Yeah. Don't you think? Uh-huh. I will definitely would have elevated my score. <laughs> six points, apparently. Six whole points. <laughs> I stand by this six-point swing. All right. We've talked about our two leads for a bit. Uh-huh. Let's just throw the bone to our other cast. There's not a ton of people in this. We, You had commented when the credits were rolling, there's probably what, like... I don't know, seven people yeah, that have not very like, many at all. names are listed. Otherwise, yep. everyone else is just um, kind of ensemble. Yep. Um, but we have, obviously, the next big hitter is Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. So, fun little fact. So, the poster for this typically has like a, a top and bottom of Jack Nicholson's face and uh-huh. then Diane Keaton's face. And then the word something's got to give in between them, right? So, it's oh, very okay. much them, them. But in Japan... Uh-huh. Can you tell me maybe what your hunch the difference might be? They did Keanu instead because of the Matrix? Because <laughs> he was so popular Not over there? instead, but they added Keanu to the poster because Keanu's such a big deal in Japan. Gotcha. <laughs> That's not surprising because I'm sure they just went bonkers over the Matrix. As... The Japanese? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and even like Keanu. Like, let's all go a little bonkers for him. He's apparently like... The coolest guy ever. I just, I was honestly, as we were sitting there and I was looking up some random Keanu stuff and everything kept popping up, 23 reasons why Keanu Reeves was the best human being ever. It's like, <laughs> no. what an awesome like BuzzFeed article. You know what's so cool <laughs> is for the longest time he was doing all this cool stuff mm-hmm. while he'd kind of like eat a lot of poop from people who didn't like his acting yeah, and a lot of sure. things. Mm-hmm. And he just kept being cool and mm-hmm. awesome. And then he made those John Wick movies and everybody's like, oh, this movie, he's pretty good in these movies. Mm-hmm. And everybody was interested in him again. Mm-hmm. And then everybody started realizing oh he's been doing cool shit for like the last 10 Mm -hmm, 15 mm -hmm. years with all his fame and fortune he has so much cool stuff he's a legitimate good guy and then like the bottle cap came off and everybody's like oh he's amazing (laughs) or the Keanu champagne he's the best (laughs) Keanu champagne I'll have a glass of that please (laughs) yeah I'll have a tall glass of that (laughs) especially in this yeah he was super hot he's very attractive surprised we didn't see him with the shirt off oh yeah hmm um, he so his doctor role is thirty in this, but he's actually thirty three. Yeah, he is uh, primo doctor age. I Absolutely. Would say. <laughs> but yeah, I've just uh, heard so many things about him that are so great. So a great philanthropist is a lot of like. Um, random anonymous do- large large sums of donations mm-hmm. to hospitals. Uh, he at times will also. Um, Oh, there's a word for it, but he basically like reinvests part of the money that he's given as a salary so that other people get paid higher mm-hmm. or so that um, that they're able to bring in other actors or other um, like crew members. I think he bought a lot of people Harley Davidsons on the set of The Matrix. How excited like, would you be for to Harley? get a Harley, Harley <laughs> as not, a present from Keanu? So great. But I'd sell it your, and then I'd be happy. You're a first boom operator and he's like... Hey, Rich, here's your Harley <laughs> Davidson. You're like, what are you talking about, Keanu? And mm-hmm. he's like, you write it home. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I love that he's also not, he doesn't take himself too seriously. So in the, uh, a Netflix movie that came out in the last few years called Always Be My Maybe. Because um, you'll always be my maybe. <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> different, you're, you're mixing, you're mixing the songs. Nope, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, plays himself in it. He plays, and he's like super goofy. He's got like glasses that don't have lenses in them, and he's very oh, Keanu. Yeah, let's have this really delicious dinner at this restaurant. So he's just sure. hilarious, and he like helped write it and come up with the stuff. So just uh, America's sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Canada's sweetheart. He's not an American actor. Did you know that? Gross. He's actually, Canadian. Get him out of here. <laughs> He can go with Rachel McAdams Get and back over there. Ryan Gosling, people I hate. Build the wall. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, anything else you want to say about Keanu in this? Just I thought he was great. He said mm-hmm. he said so much acting wise through looks mm. and between lines mm-hmm. that I was super impressed. Mm-hmm. I thought his performance was the tops. Yeah. He did excellent work. Great. Um, the only other ones that I have on this list, so just uh, just. N- um, honorable mention we've got Amanda Peet in yep. here she plays the daughter I thought she was very cute in this and great I'm kind of it's too bad that I haven't seen her in a ton of other stuff other than like saving Silverman uh-huh. but other than that she just she's just not not in a ton no Mm-mm. yeah which is I guess I don't know fine but yeah 
Yeah, yep. I'm always I don't just, know I'm always just curious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then <laughs> a great little uh, cameo, John Favre is in this for yeah, like yep. two hot seconds. Yeah, he's, he's got, got like two, two lines. Two scenes, two lines a piece. He's <laughs> yeah. like an under five in this. Yeah, but he's an under five he, in this. Yep, he makes a nice little spicy. Which appearance. is interesting because at that point too, it's not that he wasn't already doing his own things and producing. Like mm-hmm. I'm sure, do we have Iron Man by now? No. 2003. No, Iron Man came. The first one came out in 08. No, well, that's I'm the way phase. Off. That's phase one, babe. Okay. Come on. My bad. Come on. Learn your marvel history to be fair he was doing things before iron man including producing but okay um but then also our our fourth person in this francis mcdormand yeah is in this. Yep. super surprising very mm-hmm. interesting turn for francis i mean it was pre-explosion but she'd already done mm-hmm. fargo mm-hmm. so i mean she was already a big deal but she wasn't what mm-hmm. she's going to become mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of <laughs> what she's going to become. she's going to become Ooh, right that sounds so um ominous but not like ominous sounds bad that's so like uh whatever the positive of ominous is foretelling yeah foreshadowing <laughs> the great beast she was to awaken into amazing <laughs> um let's talk about scenes let's talk about scenes that you enjoyed and let's talk about scenes that you were like uh not my fave okay i'll go first for example yeah yep you go first i loved all of the bits with their glasses so they yeah, apparently yep. have the same Very prescription uh diane keaton and jack nicholson and there's all <laughs> it's kind of when you least expect it they're like can you read that no i can't read that and it's just it's so cute and it's so i don't know if you ever noticed your parents do that but my parents get real squinty too and yeah they put their yep. glasses on and like put it away from their face and it's like oh I don't, and it was just yeah it was charming and then they end up switching their glasses at mm-hmm. one point which i actually really love that story i love that story mm-hmm, too mm-hmm. yep and so they don't end up getting them back to each other until they reunite in paris and they're both like putting their glasses on to read what time it is and then there's this cute little giggle moment but then you feel bad because keanu is starting to realize he's just sitting that, there watching it that he's losing her yep. or that he never had her uh-huh <gasps> have been sad have you ever Okay. What? <laughs> what are you going to ask me? Have you ever been in that situation where you're sitting there while a person either, it doesn't even have to be somebody you're with, but like a person you have a crush on is like flirting with somebody else and you're like, I'm losing them. <laughs> like, or I don't have them or like, I'll never get them. Like you're watching you, something that you think is going to happen literally float away before your eyes. <laughs> um, Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure I can think of some moments where that's a hard spot to be in. Yes. Your heart hurts for him. It You're like, oh, sucks. I'm and losing it. He keeps a smile on his mm-hmm. face and just like watches, and I could feel the pain through mm-hmm. the smile. That's why I say his acting was tops. Mm-hmm. He did great. <laughs> there you go, spitting again. Did I spit on you again? Yes, on the word great. <laughs> he did great. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I also like the scene where, so it's, I think after. The night that they sleep together, then they end up sleeping together in the same bed and they sleep Mm -hmm. for eight hours. Which is so true. (laughs) The minute you start dating somebody, it's like your hour, your sleep hours go up like two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because both of them are like, yeah, I only sleep four hours. Yeah, me too. I've never been able to sleep eight. And then when the day after they wake up at like at 11, they're like, oh, God, what time is it? Which is so funny because I was picturing Rach. And when Rach doesn't get eight and a half, she gets mad. Oh, yeah. When when I keep her up, when I keep her up till 10 and she's like, no, I'm only going to get eight. (laughs) And she gets all upset about it. Oh, no, I'm only going to get eight. To be fair, when I wake up those mornings, it's probably better for me because I feel even maybe more refreshed. I think there's something about my nine that makes me a wee bit groggy but you can't tell me that after eight that i have to get up it's too hard (laughs) but you you had a partner add on like an hour Mm -hmm. you get a dog add on another hour you get two dogs add on another hour forget about it so we sleep three more hours than we used to when we were single just to throw (laughs) that out there yeah (laughs) easy How about giving me some scenes that you want to talk about? So I didn't like all this, all the slapsticky stuff, like him fainting and like the heart attacks and stuff. Like oh, some of it got a little old sure. with Jack Nicholson, well, especially because he had like eight. <laughs> I did like a moment when Diane Keaton doesn't like him still, and she goes, "You effing guy!" And then she gives him mouth to mouth. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like, "Oh, you effing guy!" <laughs> and then she just gives him mouth to mouth. But that was really funny. Um, I. Well, I had some questions. Yeah, okay. We can okay. questions. So, what did you think of the first date 
that is it Keanu in her half or Nicholson in her half? And they he one of them kisses her on the cheek right away. Oh, that's Keanu. That's Keanu. Yeah, he's kind of presumptuous with his kisses. A little bit, a little bit. And then he kisses her on her neck. Uh-huh. They don't actually kiss, but he kisses her on her neck mm-hmm. at the date. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa. It was a bold choice. Very bold. Yeah, and a little like, ooh, I don't know that we were asking for that. Okay. <laughs> that was probably my one knock against Let's Keanu. Let's pretend <laughs> you're at a date with a guy. You don't know how you feel about him yet. You're like, oh, he's cute or whatever. And he leans over and he kisses you on your neck. <laughs> Oh. That's so forward. It is, right? It's, it's so almost forward. more forward than him kissing you on the mouth, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's almost more intimate, I think. Probably. Yeah. I mean, definitely more than cheek, but yeah, probably more than mouth, too. Yeah. 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 Yikes. Yay. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Um, so I did like the moment. There was a couple things um, where after Keanu calls her and asks her on the date, and she's super happy, mm-hmm. and she's like writing afterwards and she's like kind of mouthing her lines and like kind of acting them out which is a thing i've because i've written some screenplay stuff or (laughs) written some play stuff Mm -hmm. and whenever you're doing dramatic literature you kind of do like mouth the words or you kind of like put yourself in the shoes of the character and she was totally doing it It was really funny and just like how happy she was and like had a little chip had a little spark in her step Mm -hmm. and uh, i love that and then i actually even though this would have been too much Mm. i thought it was going to be too much I liked the crying montage. You like the crying montage? Okay. So Jack Nicholson <laughs> leaves and Diane Keen, everything just sets her off. She starts crying and she'll even have moments where she like is writing something and she's really proud of herself and she starts laughing and then she just starts crying. And yeah. that to me, I would have thought it was goofy, but I've had these moments where like you're just doing something random and also you just burst into tears. And so it felt like somewhat real to me. I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. I actually kind of believe this. Mm -hmm. And it's like making fun of it, but I kind of believe it. Yeah, it was. And honestly, anybody but Keaton couldn't have pulled that off. Yeah. I think I just can't see anybody else doing that and having it be as light as it was. Now, I... I think I felt it got a little bit long. I, sure. I, three is comedy, then yeah, eight we didn't is, need we didn't need as many as we eight did. Eight is like side hurt well, laugh. I don't know. No, they usually it's usually in threes. So three, <laughs> six, nine. I don't know. I didn't. I would lost count. <laughs> Maybe they hit you on an odd number then, oh. or on an even number. Maybe that's why I felt weird about it. <laughs> Could use one more or one less. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You have one new message. Message one. Erica, hi, it's Julian. I'm in the restaurant, and I'm just wondering if you're on your way. It's about 8.20. It's a lovely night out here. It's uh, nice. What did you think of all the Viagra talk? Um, I thought it was appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Because what are we... Was it too much, though? We mentioned Viagra at least three times, if not more. Well, because he keeps having a heart attack, and that's the, a, there's he, a med complication. Yep. Um, no, I think it's a very real part of his life. Sure. Honestly, it's like I maybe one time too many, but I thought it was good to have that in there. I kept thinking... Viagra got really popular like with Bob Dole, right? In like the late nineties or whatever. <laughs> sure. And so uh, it felt like this was a snapshot in history. Were they sponsored by Viagra? Well, I didn't think that necessarily. <laughs> I just thought like we, this kind of pinpoints it in history. Sure. That I don't think it's something we would really make fun of because it just seems like kind of normal. And it's like, yeah, you take antidepressants, you take Viagra, you do whatever you gotta do. Sure. And we don't think that's super funny anymore. Uh-huh. And so I didn't think it was as funny as I think we would have thought it was back in the early two thousands. That's a really good point. Yeah. E D was a lot funnier back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why E D lost its comic charm, but it did. <laughs> Should we bring it back? Yeah, we gotta bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this movie doesn't have a tagline. Do you want to make a tagline for it? Um. Gun <laughs> to your head. Ki- kiss me before you die, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does say something. Uh, oh, kiss me before you make it go away. Oh, he's talking about his, uh, his, his erection. non-ED. <laughs> yep. So that should be the tag. Kiss me before you go. make it go away. <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. That was quick. Yep. <laughs> nice. 
other scenes uh, that you have on your list or questions that you have on your list? Oh, yeah. Okay. I have a lot. Okay. Let's go. Would you, did you buy that this man who has made out with, let's pretend, let's put you in the Diane Keaton shoes Mm -hmm. or in the daughter's shoes. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. The, a man who has made out with a daughter and like kind of done stuff, even though they haven't had sex. Mm -hmm. And then that's okay now for your mom to date that same person. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you've kissed at somebody Mm -hmm. like the, you, you would never be interested in that person. Like, no, you kiss my daughter. Yeah. I mean, right. Yes. A hundred times. Yes. For me. Yeah. What I'll say is, though, that was literally the premise that this was built yep. around. And I think they tried to do it as best as they could. So they have, they never, the daughter and him are never fully intimate. Yep. And they break up before break anything up pretty happens. Early. And the daughter hey, even encourages Hey, Rach just spit it. on me, by the way. She I just spit not, on me. I did not Yeah, spit. she did. She just has spittle <gasps> on my finger. It touched me in the pointer finger. How dare you, sir. Uh, but they break up before anything happens between Diane and Jack. And yep. and also the daughter sees the chemistry and she's like, you guys should date. Yeah, that's So it's true. not like it's a, like a behind the back thing or my daughter will be so sad. So she, with her permission and her blessing, the mom is like almost pushed into this relationship. So... I guess was it as good as it was gonna get? I don't know. If you if that's your premise, mm-hmm. there's only so many different things you could have done to make that any better. I yeah. think that's that it was what it was. Yeah. It still just confused me. I was like, man, I just don't think this would ever be allowed <laughs> to happen. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Maybe would it be different if they weren't mother and daughter, if it was like mother and niece or something? Yes. Like if she was that would else's help. daughter. Or if a man of Pete died. <laughs> 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 some notes. Nancy, I have some notes. I have some notes for you. <laughs> Jack didn't, but I have some notes. Hey, what do you think of the turtlenecks? I why? Why do you No, I just curious. What do you, what do you what do you think I think of turtlenecks? I think you like them. I love turtlenecks. I thought she looked adorable. And then what do you think when he she was like, cut the turtleneck? <laughs> I imagine. Not just <laughs> take off the shirt. She's like, cut the turtleneck. Because it's cutting it off is supposed to help kind of like represent her like it's loosening like her up. Herself. Yeah, because yep. she, the turtleneck symbolizes her being more like uptight and she's uh-huh. frigid or yep. cold or whatever. And yeah, and then he literally, she tells him to cut it off of her. It's like, oh, Keaton's crazy. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> That's a perfectly good turtleneck. Just take it off. <laughs> That's what I thought. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Can I ask you one other thing? What's with the turtlenecks? It's the middle of summer. No, seriously. Why do you care what I wear? Just curious. I like them. I've always liked them, and I'm just a turtleneck kind of gal. You never get hot? No. Never? Not lately. (laughs) Did you notice when Jack Nicholson and her were hooking up, he is like... If he has an anthropomorphization, like if he was working with some animal <laughs> okay, qualities. Thank you for explaining to As an listeners. actor, he's, he's taking on some animal qualities, doing mm-hmm. a little outside in work. He took on the qualities of a snorty bulldog. Mm. I, I was going to go baboon. Tell me about the bulldog. He just snorts a lot. Like, <laughs> he does? Yeah, he's like... Like he like makes oh, a lot of snorty noises. Kissing? Yeah. Like he can't get good breath. <laughs> And that's through his nose, and he kind of snorts and makes a lot of noise. Well, maybe he can't get good He's breath. exactly like a bulldog. He got those little nasal passages. <laughs> yeah, He's going to smother her face it up. It felt a little bit like he was a snorty bulldog. Because <laughs> he's round, too, you know? I was like, oh, my gosh. He would be a good bulldog as a as a human. He would. As a as an animal, would. I mean. <laughs> well, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> what do you think of how they ate eggs out of the pan? They did not put them on plates. They mm-hmm. just ate them out of a shared pan. They're in their robes post-coital, mm-hmm. and they are. It's raining outside, and mm-hmm. the whole kitchen's dark. They have some candles going. What'd you think? <laughs> well, let me just say, one of my favorite things to do after watching a Nancy Myers film is to make dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It just it lends itself to like, oh, let's go hang out in the co- kitchen. Let's cook. Let's eat. It was so cozy. Um, I love the scene. Again, we talk about, well, I talk about them being in their prime. Like, I want to be retired and I just want to make <laughs> eggs in the middle of the night and Let's just like it, hang babe. out and watch the rain outside I, of my gorgeous 
Hamptons house. I think I've got 1300 <laughs> in my neighbor's account, my Nebraska <laughs> retirement account. Okay. We could just take that and live off of it, babe. Just see how far we Let's get. Let's just live. Let's retire tomorrow. <laughs> I'll put in my two weeks. Uh, this would be great because then we'll go to Ireland mm-hmm. and I'll be, we'll be retired. Mm. And we won't even worry about money. Uh, it's so dreamy. I love this. Isn't it? I love this We just reality. bought a new car. What are we going to need to spend money on? <laughs> uh, the car? <laughs> oh, yeah. We have a payment now. Oh, shoot. It is It is sad when you think about that you're not there yet in life, but also sad to think I don't want to wish life away to get there, but yeah. I don't know. I want to be one of those like people who retire when they're 40, but I can't because <laughs> I haven't been making those choices and your husband doesn't make enough money for you to ever retire (laughs) yet power of yet because he's an artist he never will (laughs) but we'll have fun trying yes we we will yes we will will. (laughs) um did you were you rooting for keanu or were you rooting for nicholson i i was rooting for Keaton. Oh. I mean, we, we're all rooting for Keaton. That's kind of a given. Yeah. But why do I have to ruin or root for her to find herself be in one of these relationships? You want her to be happy. I am. No, for and sure. And I want her to be fulfilled. Yep. But I also don't want that to be at the expense of like giving, getting rid of the strength that she's grown. I, I can tell they did a good job of showing that she didn't have a lot of, um, she wasn't as comfortable with with Keanu, I think sure. she was a little yes. bit more. You see it rigid when and you see shy. it when she gets done writing mm-hmm. and they kiss, and then she kind of like retreats to the bedroom and he mm-hmm. chases after her and stuff. You see it a little bit, yeah. Yeah. So I get that she was more comfortable, and I and I when they're you know together, I liked the chemistry between our main two. Um, but again, he wasn't ready, and I don't think she should have to wait. And it's kind of like snooze, you lose, bud. Mm-hmm. I moved on. I'm awesome now. Oh, I am me. So you belong to the camp. This is. It's not about the right person. Hmm. It's about the right now. No, no. Yeah, you do. Because that's what you just he said. Was her right that's what pers- you just said. He was her right person, and her right person said no. So what do you do when your right person says no? You don't force them. You just say okay. But you don't wait. You're not a doormat. You don't wait like, okay, yeah. are you ready now? Okay, I'm ready too. Like, she. I don't know. It's complicated. I was it's rooting complicated. hard for Keanu. Were you? Hard. Even though you could pick up on their chemistry being yes, different? Yes, because I thought it was different. I mm. thought like she, Nicholson's like the fun guy to like hang out with mm-hmm. and I'm glad he helped you like experience love again but Keanu's who you want to settle down with. Mm-hmm. Like you're ready to like now embrace mm-hmm. love again and that's love with Keanu. And that you you guys have sure. been together now for like over six months instead mm-hmm. of like hanging out for two weeks in this lake house. Yeah. So it's like more of a he awakened something in you that allowed you then to be with Keanu. That's what I thought the story was going to be. Yeah, and I don't dislike that story. You would have to reshoot the Paris scene in order for me to find that believable because, again, when Nicholson comes, they play it up like she's like more uncomfortable okay. and wants him to be there. So, so I think if you want that, if you want the Keanu ending and then just the, hey, Jack, we're just going to be friends. It was fun while it lasted. See you later, pal. Thanks for the lessons. So, you know, you have to play it up more. But let me ask you this question then. Let me answer it. Um, in the movie La La Land. Yes. How'd you feel about the ending? I love the ending. Oh, so you love that ending. I love the ending. Which is the ending that I was just talking about. It makes me cry every time. And so every the fact time. that they don't end up together makes it a little more beautiful of a film. Yeah, it does. But they still have this love that's like that's the it's the best love that they'll ever have but mm-hmm. they just it wasn't the right time and mm-hmm. they'll never be together mm-hmm. and so that's a that's a cool story mm. that is a cool story <laughs> all right all right hudson i yeah, hear you you're i a hear bit. you okay. a okay. little bit <laughs> a little bit i listen <laughs> um i have a couple more random facts you have more th- Things that you want to throw into? I think I've gone through everything already. Amazing. I'll look through everything still, but you sure. you go for it. Yeah, you just ignore me while I tell you this next fact. Hey, that I can do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the soundtrack was by Hans Zimmer. I saw that. I saw you him. Saw it? I saw him in the title screens or whatever they oh. said. Score by mm-hmm. Hans Zimmer mm-hmm. or compos- composition well, by Hans Zimmer. Initially. It was not him. In fact, they had already done the editing uh-huh. of the film, had music for it, but it wasn't right. And it was so bad that both Nancy Myers and her music director like started crying. 
sobbing uh, when they listened to it. Because they were so sad about the music? They were like, music? it's ruining it. The music is ruining the film. It doesn't get it. It's Gosh. like, because you think about music Can in you moments, imagine being that composer and hearing that that's how they felt about your work? I know. It's really hard. And you were paid for your time, but still mm-hmm. it's like, oh, are you serious? Yeah. And she has, she didn't say anything bad about that composer. She says she loves that person. They still work together, but it just, it was not, it didn't, it didn't fit it. Well, here's what I'll say. Hmm. For a Hans Zimmer score, it was pretty weak and I didn't really hear a lot of it. (laughs) (laughs) So I actually thought like, wait, wait, wait. I actually thought like, oh, this is a Hans Zimmer score. Well, this will be on the lower part of his, if his scoreography well okay first off it's not batman v superman <laughs> this is a romantic comedy second off he wrote you this... mean dark knight right whatever no he was working on batman v superman at the time later yeah he did that music too. oh yeah but that's way later okay anyways he wrote it in a week he put well, it together. Well, then I don't think he'll be as offended when I tell him that I think it's weaker on his choreography. <laughs> People say that he does a special sound for Nancy Meyer that he will not do for anybody else. Oh, yeah? What yeah. is it? <laughs> Can he do it with his Romantic mouth or comedy. what? <laughs> Romantic comedy music. He won't do it for anybody else. It's a special sound that she can only get him to okay. do because they're buds. Well, I would say the score was just okay. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It was just okay. I know. it doesn't. And especially for Hans. Well, Hans's scores are the best, and I thought like, oh, this is a Hans. But like, think of when like I when it. I when I literally like think in my mind, oh, this is a Hans. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not that great. Did you were you expecting like a sweeping drama? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. What, I was <laughs> what did you want it to I be? I was thinking I would I would think about the music more, and I thought about the music literally zero. Well, maybe that's good. Maybe you're not supposed to. No, think No, except about for the one music. time when I was like, oh yeah, this is a Hans. <laughs> 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 There's like one time where I thought about it. <laughs> all right. I'm going to get into uh, budget and money and all that fun stuff, but I want one more segment before we switch gears. Okay. I want to talk about the trend, Coastal Grandma. Ty, okay. have you heard of this trend before? Yeah, because you told me it. And what do we, What did I tell you about it? <laughs> you told me it's like uh, Atlantic, um, Atlantic Ocean by the sea, rich people, lake homes, dressing up, old people, turtlenecks cardigans okay anything else fun hats (laughs) (laughs) fun hats (laughs) i mean you got you you got some some pieces here so coastal grandmother and again for those of you who don't know many of you may um is an aspirational lifestyle involving things like wearing white clothing with button down oh yeah so much white clothing in this movie gardening Cooking your favorite barefoot Contessa recipes. Taking long solo walks along the beach. This is the coastal grandma vibe. Yep. Uh, Diane Keaton's house is in this film. For sure. Or I guess I should say Nancy Meyer's house in this film is like primo, the OG, coastal grandma. Yeah. And Diane Keaton, everything she wears in this is also people now, uh-huh. people our age, even younger than us, are aspiring to dress like Diane Keaton in this film. Sure. Bucket hats. Yep. And... So that's what I'm saying, fun hats. <laughs> fun hats, yes. <laughs> bucket hats, fun hats. The turtlenecks, the cardigans, the the khakis, the, the little white linen, all of it. Yep. And... Obviously, your wife is 100% here for it. I know she is. Have been for a while. Didn't know what it was called, but that is, it speaks to me so strongly. You know, and the funny thing is, we always think that Diane Keaton started it, but she didn't. Hmm. She actually stole it. (laughs) And um, this was sixth grade for us, so we were 12. So 1999, Mm -hmm. Britney Spears comes out with a music video called Sometimes. Oh. Mm-hmm. She stole that whole outfit. It's true. I Sometimes think... I'll run. Hey, this is great. 16 bars. I'm not doing that. Uh, does she have 16 a, bars. Does she have a crop top Sometimes in that? Because that would be the only thing that keeps it from being like completely coastal grandma. Maybe. <laughs> it's a crop top. <laughs> a crop top is not coastal grandma. Maybe it is. I though. mean, it could be. Maybe millennial coastal grandma. When you get older, that'll be the only change. Crop top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a couple of coastal grandma things, like a checklist, and you give me a thumbs up down if you would. Do if them I like them, yeah. If you would be like, yeah, that's cool, I would do that, or no, that's lame. Okay. Um. So, ten things a coastal grandmother would do. Number one, steal her lover's work button down and wear it with a work in jeans to wear it to work in jeans when lunch. Wait, what? Yeah, wear it <laughs> to work with worn in. There it is, with worn in jeans. Oh, okay. To lunch. 
Are you wait, you're gonna wear it to lunch or you're wearing it to work? You're gonna wear it. <laughs> Sorry, wear I'm it. confused by this whole you're thing. A... <laughs> <laughs> uh, start over. Okay. Don't worry. Say I'll, it again. I'll edit all of this. No, you won't. No, you won't. This is glorious. <laughs> I'm much this too lazy. Is glorious. This is the start of the fun, probably. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Steal your lover's work button down and wear it with worn-in jeans to lunch. God, no wonder that was hard to say. <laughs> that is a hard sense. Whoa. I mean, I guess a thumbs up. I don't know. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, how about keep a pocket notebook to write poetic phrases when inspiration strikes? Stupid. Thumbs down. <laughs> nope. Pick fresh peonies from your garden? No. <laughs> <laughs> Open a bottle of red wine at 4 p.m. No, nobody likes red. Take Only wa- white, sweet white. <laughs> <laughs> Take long walks on the beach with your beloved dog? Yes, thumbs. <laughs> Wear signature jewelry uh, that's curated from flea markets? No, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Invite friends over every week for an afternoon tea? No, because you don't drink tea. But I would say yes. <laughs> is this for you? <laughs> and then show up to every occasion in a straw hat. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> Gavin DeGraw, you get out of here. You said fun hats. Yeah, I know. More fun, like cowboy hats. <laughs> I mean... Page boy hats, things like that. <laughs> oh, okay. So you would say that, I mean, if I'm scoring your quiz, you are not on the Coastal Grandma vibe. No, I think I, well, how many this was there? There was nine you. or eight? Yeah, I kind of skipped a few, but yeah, you had a I very like three. You had a very low score, under fifty percent. Yeah, you are not coastal grandma. You yeah. are, no, oh, what's the opposite of coastal emo grandma? kid, Midwest baby. You are, <laughs> you are a millennial emo kid in his thirties. <laughs> That's what you just like want to be professional, truly emo kid. <laughs> well, I'll have you know, I aced that test. Yeah, I bet you did. Yeah, thousand percent. <laughs> Where's your straw hat, girl? I mean, I wear hats to cover my face so I don't get sun on my yeah, face. Yeah, but you wear like ball caps. You I don't do wear cute bu- ball I caps. I don't do bucket hats. You but... look like Alex Mack. You wear <laughs> hey. overalls and a hey, backwards hey, hey, hey. cap. I did my time with bucket hats. There was a time and place for them, and I had a bucket hat, and I was in middle school, and it was <laughs> awesome. I look so cute. I wore pigtails under a tie. Oh my I was gosh, adorable. That, that sounds adorable. I'll probably do it again when I get older someday. Yeah, but, you will. <laughs> but right now, I'm not jumping on that trend <laughs> just yet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Power of yet. Okay. <laughs> Should we talk some monies? Yes. Let's talk about the monies. All right. The budge for this. Yep. $80 million. Okay. Opening weekend. Six... That's a lot of money, by the way, for it this. It is a lot of 80 money. $80 mil for this time period with what the film all entails? Yeah. I think that's two, a lot think of money. two leads, though. I know, but $20 mil a piece, maybe that's like half the budge? That house was probably 200 mil. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> well, there your budget doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Keanu donated money. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Seems Opening fun. weekend, only 16 mil in the U.S. 16? 16. Oh. But thankfully, worldwide, 265 mil. Whoa. Where did this movie do so well at? Everywhere. If it didn't do well at the U.S., though, where would it do well? No one said it didn't do well. That was just opening weekend. Oh, okay. And this was, oh my gosh, was this a... This was a Christmas movie. <laughs> it Does takes place like in the summer. Christmas movie no, to you? I feel like it should come out around Valentine's Day if you want to do that, like a romantic comedy around then. Yeah, not Christmas. It was like this holiday season. Something's gotta give. It's so summery. Doesn't make sense. I don't. Disagree. I mean, I guess there's snow at the very end <laughs> in Paris so you, in January. So you have that, yep. I guess. Um, would you be shocked to find out that our two leads were nominated for Globes? No, because the Globes will nominate anybody with a pulse. Would you who be? People have heard and of. I should say, actually, both Nams and Keaton won for Best Actress in a Comedy for a Globe. Okay. Would you be surprised if I said that Keaton was nommed for a SAG? Um, no. As I thought, she was charming and good. I'd have to see who else was up that year. Mm-hmm. But off the offhand, I don't know. Not necessarily. And lastly, would you be surprised <laughs> that Keaton was nominated? For an Oscar. A slightly surprise now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am too by that. All true though. All facts. Yeah, I mean it's not the most outlandish mm-hmm. Oscar nom. It's not like Meryl who she just breathes on screen and they're like, Yeah, nominator. <laughs> but <laughs> give it, give at it, give the it. same time, <laughs> I will say it's somewhat of a surprise. Mm-hmm. Not a complete surprise, but somewhat. Yeah. A baby surprise. Baby surprise. Mm-hmm. Now, Nicholson should not have been nominated for anything. Mm-hmm. It, he, it's not that he's not good. He's yeah, good. Yeah. But he, this is not an uh, award nomination performance. I don't even think for a Globe. But mm-hmm. not shocking that they would do that when they nominate Johnny Depp, even when his movies do terrible. <laughs> or The Tourist. The Tourist. Yeah. Woof. And Angelina Jolie. They woof, both got nominated. Woof, woof, woof. All right. Ron Tomato score. Yep. 
Or should I give you the critics' consensus first? I don't care. I'll Your give choice. you the critics' consensus. And how about first. you sing your 16 bars with it? Though it occasionally stumbles into sitcom territory, something's gotta give is mostly smart, <laughs> funny romantic comedy with sharp performances by Jack Nicholson, Diane Keaton, and Keanu Reeves. <laughs> I love this song. It's such a good jingle. 72%. It sounded like a sitcom theme song. <laughs> Something's gotta give. Do, 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 do. <laughs> It was very fun. <laughs> Wait, I did, and scene. Okay, I I loved it so much. Can you just say it now, though? <laughs> yeah. <we can. laughs> you, you got it. You got it. Um, though it occasionally stumbles into sitcom territory, uh-huh. something's got to give is mostly a smart, funny romantic comedy with sharp performances from Jack Nicholson, Diane Keaton, and Keanu Reeves. Nice. 72% awesome. for critics, Okay. 69 for audience. Wow. Mm, okay. Peaky, cool. Peaky. Um, I'm going to read just a couple of reviews because yeah, no, they're fun. Go for it. Uh, one review. For, this is from BBC.com. As monotonous and predictable as a pacemaker. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> NBC? BBC. Oh, BBC. The Brits, the, the Brits. Digs. They hated we it. We got your ass. <laughs> um, another one. Uh, the movie, which ricochets between farce and poignancy, casts just enough romantic pixie dust to leave you smiling. Newsweek. Okay. And then Ebert said, the film's dialogue is smart. Mm-hmm. Reeves' role seems like nothing more than a walking plot complication. But it is a movie like this depends crucially on its stars. Mm-hmm. And to complain that Nicholson is playing himself or that Keaton is always playing a character much like her public persona is missing the point. Part of the appeal depends on the movie's teasing confusion of reality and fiction. Uh, I'm confused. <laughs> He's saying that... Yeah, explain it a little bit. Yeah, well, here's what I what I hear is that... People were saying like, oh, yeah, they're good in it because they play themselves. Oh, And what okay. he's saying is like, no, that's missing the point. They're so good at it uh-huh. that you don't know what's real. You can't tell, distinguish between them and what's real from a movie perspective because they're that good. Sure. That's kind of what he's saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So people were giving them crap because they said like they're just playing themselves up there? I mean, probably. Would, oh. would you, wouldn't you think that like... You could you could make sure. that for a, a lot you of things. Sure, you could make like that Diane argument. Keaton, you could say like Dan Keaton. You kind of always play this like quirky, quirky gal. Yeah, doesn't she? Yep, she reminded me of your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be more specific. She reminds me of your, my mom On when we've had some happy hours. Two glasses of when wine. She gets silly. <laughs> and I see it and I love it. And to me, and I, th- she would take that as a compliment. She loves Dan. Well, Keaton. Diane Keaton looked fantastic. Oh, I didn't say we didn't say looks. So you said act. <laughs> that's enough out of you <laughs> um, so okay but here's my thing when I don't like when people get that as a huge complaint when mm-hmm. they're like I just feel like they're just playing like it's good okay it's really really good but it feels like they're just kind of themselves mm-hmm. guess what when a great actor is doing a great performance you should see a shade of themselves mm-hmm. because guess what the closest thing to reality that you can present on stage is it's not morphing my body and turning into an ogre and I'm like eh, what's going on where's the trolls at <laughs> that's not as interesting as showing you a slice of life mm-hmm. that is my true inner spirit showed to you a little bit while I'm mm-hmm. on that stage yeah Jack Nicholson really dates young women <laughs> and he is unapologetic about he's it he's a little weird Kind of creepy, a little off putting, but kind of charming. You can't help it, you can't look away. All those things are true. Diane Keaton, you're a little quirky and weird, but really cute. Mm -hmm. That's who they are. Tom Hanks, we get this all the time with Tom Hanks, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are, it's okay for actors to be somewhat like themselves Mm -hmm. and still be great performers. Mm -hmm. We don't have to just have the Daniel Days in the world. Sure. We can can applaud that. But we need to applaud when people show an actual mirror up to nature, mm. which is the human experience, mm-hmm. which what's the best way to show that? Through yourself. Yeah. You are the vessel. Mm. And that is a little acting talk with Ty. <laughs> or as way. Rachel would call it, a tirade. <laughs> oh, tyrant. <laughs> oh, tyrant. Tyrant. <laughs> and I'll have you know that in an interview, when Nicholson was asked about dating younger women and why he likes them, he said, skin. <laughs> I know. What? Come on. You did it. I'm going to end on that note.
<laughs> oh my gosh. So, yes. we're ready for you now. Okay. It's your turn. Take it away. Horny old people rejoice. They finally made a flick for you. Want to see Keaton naked? Boom. Nicholson's butt? Boosh. Keanu giving neck kisses out like Halloween candy? Boing. <laughs> Besides a botched landing. This movie is pretty dang good. Which makes you scared that you might be morphing yourself into a horny old person more and more every day. 69%, which I believe is exactly what the audience said. Yes, well done, right in total. Yep. Very good. This movie was going to be a 75 before oh. the botched oh, wow. ending. wow. It was wow. going to be up there with like The Crow, mm-hmm. and now it's dropped to Ever After and Teen Wolf. Mm. I was going to say Teen Titans. We never reviewed the oh. Teen Titans TV show, but we should. <laughs> no. Uh, Ever After is good company. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean- if I was going to watch another movie right now, I'd watch this movie again. Mm-hmm. But Ever After, I think, is a little bit better. So I had mm-hmm. to balance that. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. It does. It does. Good balancing. Yep. Uh, I had this in between Safe Haven and Notting Hill. Okay. Right in the middle. I had it at a 62. You had it lower. I had it a little bit lower. All the episode, or all the things so far this season, you've had lower than me, I think. Oh, interesting. And so this is the first one where I'm higher than you, you I think, are. this season. Unless in camp we did. I can't remember. I can't no, 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 we were both pretty low. In <laughs> yeah, we were so low that it doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think with this for me, as a whole, I like it, but I think... Um, the the piece about it getting a little sitcommy at times, mm-hmm. I think. Oh, I, it wasn't. It was not without faults. I thought there was a lot of things that could tighten it up. And honestly, I just I want to rethink the ending. Yeah, I want to rethink it. The first quarter of the movie, I was a little worried. Mm. Or maybe not even quarter. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's not fair. First ten percent of the movie, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm not gonna like this. Mm-hmm. I remember like a, that thought popping into my mind and being like, Nope, I'm not gonna like this one. <laughs> and no then it me. gradually kind of won me over, and where I was laughing more and more, I was like, Oh, I'm enjoying myself. Mm-hmm. And it, so it took a little bit, but yeah. I finally did enjoy myself. Good. <laughs> I'm glad. Yep. I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Finally. <laughs> Jeez Louise, what's a girl gotta do? <laughs> well, something had to give. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn it over to you. What do you have in store for us? Okay. Next week. And then I'm going to turn it right back over to you. Listen to this. Uh-oh. I've got two options on the table for you. Okay. One, <laughs> 80s, mm-hmm. pure 80s flick. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm. <laughs> also kind of 80s flick, I think it's early <laughs> 90s though, sci-fi action. <laughs> Ooh. Um. 80s dramedy. Or early 90s sci-fi action? Hmm. I think I'm a little actioned out still. Okay. I think Top Gun did a number on me. <laughs> oh, wow. As only it can. Okay. So let's put, let's get into the 80s. Okay. We haven't had any 80s yet. Yeah, have we not? I mean, we've had Top Gun, but I'm going to put that more in, yeah, the, that's true. in the action field. But... This movie is as 80s as 80s gets. <gasps> This is gets. an 80s zeitgeist movie. I don't know what that means. That means it's like the movie of the times. Zeitgeist. It represents the whole era. Wow. A movie starring none other <gasps> and actually coining the term Brat Pack. Mm. We're going to watch next week. Uh-huh. Emilio Estevez. Yes. Sexy Rob Lowe. Yes. Demi Moore. Okay. Other people you'll recognize from those John Hughes movies. Oh, boy. We are going to watch St. Elmo's Fire! Otherwise, I have to be like this, and then I get. You don't have to get that close. I get oh, okay, grab my foot. Oh, ah! no. Oh, no. Ah! Ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, okay? Nanny. Is it so Ooh. cramping? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. I wonder if anybody's had ever had a foot cramp on the pod before. <laughs>